right, what's up guys? Welcome to episode five of All Access, the Freetography Urban Exploration Podcast. So we made it to episode five. Episode four, guys, was our most listened to episode yet. Ethan Mini got some crazy downloads and listens on his episode, which is amazing. So thank you guys so much. We're going to get to today's episode in a couple of minutes. I just want to give you guys a real quick heads up of what's coming up in the future. Next episode after this one will be Angelo from Exploring with Angelo. Next, we're going to talk to a girl by the name of Trespass Everywhere on Instagram, and we're going to talk to her about a zine that she put out uh, containing stories that she found in different abandoned places. Then a very special episode, guys. We have an episode booked with a criminal lawyer by the name of Megan Smith from Megan Smith Law. Next, guys, we've got Brent from Abandoned Urbex Canada. Very easygoing, great guy. He's got a great YouTube channel, super down to earth guy. So guys, let's quit messing around. Let's get right to the episode with Brent from Abandoned Urbex Canada. All right, guys, here we go. Welcome to podcast number five of the All Access Freaktography podcast. Today's guest is uh, one of the nicest guys in the hobby. I've had the pleasure of meeting him and hanging out with him. Uh, he has one of the fastest growing YouTube channels I've ever seen with 120,000 subscribers with only 143 videos. I got double that, and I'm not even close to 120,000. <laughs> He's got 14,000 on Instagram 33,000 on TikTok. He's been all over the place. He's been all over Canada to the US. One of the nicest guys around, guys. His name is Brent and he's with Abandoned Urbex Canada. Brent, thanks for joining us on the podcast today. Hey, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Congratulations, awesome. by the way, for uh, your new podcast. Thank you. It's a, it's a lot of work. It's Because um, what I do with this one is, you know, most podcasts are audio only, but some platforms let you do video. And plus with the fact that I have, have a YouTube channel, I thought, why not do a video podcast with the option of audio only? So, so the subscribers can listen to it on Apple. They can listen to it on Spotify okay. or they can watch it on YouTube or some of the other platforms. So as we talk, I'll be overlaying some of your pictures and some of your video content to give a bit of more of a visual element. Anyways, it's a lot of work. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I, bet. I haven't even looked into that. So that, no, that's great. No, I wish you all the luck. Cool. Thanks a lot. So no uh, why don't we get started by you telling us a little bit about yourself and how did you get into the hobby of exploring abandoned places? Well, a bit about myself. I work full time, so I don't I don't do YouTube full time, which I've thought right. about doing. But my full time job has I have a pension, so I am kind of like <laughs> on the fence there. So, uh, you know, the pension means a lot to me. So. Uh, so, yeah, I work full time. I obviously like the outdoors. Like I uh, love hiking, boating. I go fishing all the time. I have ATVs. I just love being outside, fresh air. Um, I play, uh, I work out a lot. I play men's hockey. I love sports, mostly hockey. Yeah. I was up late a little last night because of Leafs game. They won yeah. last night. So I'm pretty happy about that. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I know since uh, getting into exploring, my dad actually got me into it. Um, I haven't told too many people about this, but um, yeah, I was probably, I don't know, probably around eight years old when I first like went into my very first abandoned house and it was an abandoned farmhouse. Um, I was with my family and my dad pulled over and said, Hey, let's go check out this abandoned house. So he took this whole family in there. We were just little and um, yeah, we went in there. I remember walking around and I remember the owner of the property showed up. And I was a farmer and he just said, Hey guys, you know, this is very dangerous in here. You guys shouldn't be in here. Um, you know, I'm, I'm worried about you guys falling through the floor. And so we laughed right away. But ever since then, I was just like, I just loved it. So anytime I'd see anything abandoned or anything cool, I just had to explore it. And, you know, I went uh, on my own. Like I didn't, I didn't really have too many friends that were in, into it. So when I was younger, um, we went to a few abandoned places with friends and that, and then when I got older in high school, I continued to explore. Um, but yeah, I just, I just loved it. And I didn't start getting into the filming of Abandoned Place until about three years ago. I had absolutely uh, no social media whatsoever. Um, so I just decided one day to say, hey, you know what? Like, maybe I'll just start filming these places and posting it on YouTube and have a little channel going. And I didn't have no clue that this was even a thing. It was it was <laughs> hilarious because when I went on YouTube and I started looking up abandoned places, I'm I just seen all kinds of people. I seen all kinds of channels doing doing this, and I was just amazed. 
And I was, so I just watched hours and hours of, uh, abandoned videos, like abandoned places in Urbex. And I was just so excited. And then I opened up an Instagram account. Um, and I was shocked to see who was, like, I thought I was the only one, but I was shocked that this was like <laughs> so popular and people enjoy it. And it was just, it was crazy. Like, I truly thought like I was just like this weird hobby that I was into and I didn't really tell a lot of friends that I was into it. Um, but yeah, I was just, I was just amazed how popular this hobby, this hobby is. So yeah, I started exploring quite a few years ago, I guess. Yeah. That's, that's really funny. And it's the same way with like, when I started out, I had been interested in, you know, abandoned places and going up on rooftops and crawling around in drains just for the heck of it for fun. Yeah. And then I discovered by chance that it's the thing that people do. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm already doing this. I'll join this funny community of people that break the law and <laughs> put the <laughs> evidence on the internet. Yeah. I used to <laughs> do a uh, lot of drains actually. Like you, you just mentioned fun. drains. I used to do, yeah, when I was a kid, we got our skateboards and uh, <laughs> we used to go on these drains that the further you'd go, the smaller the drains got. And yeah. there were kids that went in there and when you reached like the 12th manhole, like you were like, you know, the king, like you had to sign your name in there and it got smaller and smaller. So at first we, we walked through the drains and then it got smaller and we eventually were on our bellies on our <laughs> skateboards, going through these sewers, going past, yeah. you know, dead raccoons and poop everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, but I don't do drains much anymore. I don't do that. Much. No, no, I don't. I used to, I used to do it once a year. Now I just kind of, I don't even think about it anymore. Um, Awesome. So you actually, uh, you already answered my second question is at what point did you decide to get into the YouTube space and what inspired that? But it seems like you just kind of naturally just got there. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I just thought, I just, yeah, I was just, I couldn't believe it. Like, so I'm a big fan. Like I, I know um, I do a channel now, obviously, but I still watch guys. I watch videos all the time. I just, I'm just a big fan of it. Um, you know, when I have time, obviously, like I love sitting down and yeah watching a few guys that I follow and, you know, your channel, of course. Thanks. You're the guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I knew somebody was watching. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so speaking of YouTube, I mean, your, your growth, uh, when I think of at least Canadian explorers and rapid growth YouTube channels, I think of you and I think of Ethan Minnie. and it's unreal how fast both of your channels have grown. And Ethan focuses only on the, the abandoned mansions you have, like me, everything. You've got, you know, hotels, houses, you know, mansions. You've managed to do it all. And you're actually, you're luckily, you're getting regular five-digit views on every video very rapidly. Did that start from the beginning? Or was there one video that really kicked it off for you? Yeah, no, it definitely didn't start off from the beginning. Like I remember posting my first few videos and I got a few hundred views and I was cool with that. Yeah. You know, and I, I didn't do, I didn't start this channel, you know, to make a fortune or, you know, I just, I just thought of doing more for fun as a hobby. I enjoy filming and, and sharing my videos with everybody. And yeah. I was happy with a few hundred views and, you know, a thousand subscribers was my goal. Um, uh -huh. no, it started off slow, you know, but once I reached probably a thousand subscribers, um, it picked up a little, um, yeah, I did, I did a house, um, I can't remember the episode, but, uh, it was a white abandoned farmhouse and there's all kinds of crap left behind. Like it was this unreal creepy dolls. And, um, and I think that, I think that video kind of, it got a lot of views and it kind of took off from there, I think. Um, uh, yeah. So yeah, it was just it did come pretty fast. It did. It did. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but you know, it, it takes time to the first, first thousand subscribers is tough. You gotta yeah. just keep with it. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm crawling towards that hundred K. I think I'm at 80, I'm almost at 85,000. So, you know, I'm, I'm working towards that hundred K, but it's a long climb, man, to get there. And, and oh, the yeah. funny thing is you mentioned, you mentioned the one video this, my next question is, the abandoned hoarder house, which was that, that white house full of stuff. That's the one that got you over uh, a million views. And it's so crazy. I was talking to Carlo about his videos, Carlo Pelosa, and he's got a video that hit over a million views and it's the dumpiest, worst piece of crap house. <laughs> I know <laughs> that, that house. I can't I understand. Been, I, but. I, 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 I did a video of that house and I didn't even get nowhere near 
a million views. I did the house that we're talking about right now that you did that has a million views. And it's like, I have houses that hit a million views, but they make, it makes no sense. You can do oh. the, put the most effort into a vi- really good video in a really good location. And it won't do as good as a dumpy house that you don't even put any thought behind. Um, so I thought I would bring up the abandoned hoarder house of yours. That's got a million over a million views. And, you know, tell us a little bit about that house. And do you think there's a reason why that one got a million views? Well, I know COVID uh, helped my channel out quite a bit, I think. Um, yeah. Because people were just at home and they're just surfing YouTube. And um, I got yeah. a lot of new subscribers from that. But yeah, that hoarder house was that was a crazy house. Um, and it was, it was, uh, I remember going, well, walking up the driveway, it was all overgrown and cars yeah. everywhere. And I didn't expect to see what was inside. And it was this crazy hoarder house. Like everything was just stacked to the roof. Well, you've been there. It was just unreal. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of valuables still in there. Like it was like hoarding went into the vehicles that went into the trailers outside that went into the garage, like everywhere. Mm-hmm. This guy must've just jammed everything in there. But it was a it was a creepy house. Like um, it was really cool exterior too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like excellent exterior. Uh, that little three wheeler bike. Remember in the front uh, the yeah. front the yeah. driveway there. That was that's pretty neat. But yeah, yeah, I remember going to the second floor, and that's when I got that really weird feeling. I don't get that too often in these places, mm-hmm. but I got this really weird feeling that like somebody was in there, like yeah. hiding, or I don't know. Like I just it was just creeping me out. But I remember walking down the hall and there was this that i don't know if you've seen it in your video or in when you explored it um the stick with the big knife taped yep. to the end of the stick it's just sitting yeah there, i saw that the open. yep like i'm like what is that for like i don't know like rats or people i don't <laughs> yeah. know like it was just this homemade weapon and i'm just thinking like should i like throw that away or should i hide it because i feel like someone was in there with me and then yeah i think there was a few bottles of urine in there and it looked like there was one bed it was cleared off so it did look like someone was staying there but there was no power and uh no water no no running water anymore um so i don't think he was there um but yeah i've been meaning to actually go back to that place i've been i wouldn't mind checking it out again seeing you know what's going on over there but yeah uh, yeah, i've had that sensation I've had that sensation too of thinking that there's somebody there in the house with you. It actually has happened to me once. I did a house in Etobicoke once and um, there was a squatter living upstairs and I heard them uh, go into a closet and close the door while Ooh. I was downstairs. And I like when I went in, I called out as I usually do. Is, is anybody here? You know, I called out. I'm just going to take some pictures. If you're here, just let me know. And I didn't hear anything. So I continued on doing my thing. And within a few minutes, I heard the closing of a closet door. So I called up and I said, all right, I know you're in here. I'm just taking pictures. You don't have to hide. I'm no of no harm to you. Crickets. So I stayed. I kept taking my pictures and I even went upstairs. And there, sure enough, there was a room uh, in one of the bedrooms that was a complete squatter setup. They had they had like a patio chair laid out that they were sleeping on. Uh, It looked like it was a girl. That's why I don't think she came out. Um, oh, I see. From the clothes that were laying around, I think it was a girl. And there was a receipt on the floor from the convenience store up the street from the, the day before. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. So, and, yeah. Exactly. so I saw the closet that I knew she was in. And a small part of me wanted so bad to just open it. <laughs> but I knew she was probably terrified. So I just left her. And whoever it was was hiding in a closet for the whole time that I was there and she didn't bother coming out. So, um, yeah, anyways, yeah, they freak me out. They do. They, they, they scare me because sometimes they're on drugs and they, yeah, they yeah. they've been known to just attack anybody, even police. Like there's been police that open up their tents and, yeah. uh, they were just lunge at them and with a yeah. knife, they all carry knives. Um, yep. I've dealt with a few of them before. They all have, you know, usually have about four or five knives on them. And yeah, yeah, so like, yeah, that's why when I, when I come across squatters, usually I just leave. I don't even want to chat with them. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just don't want to, you know, they don't know who I am. Like I, yeah, I kind of make myself aware like you did, which is a good idea to say, Hey, like I'm just here taking pictures. I'm documenting. Mm-hmm, these things. Mm-hmm. I'm a photographer. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, I just, I usually give them their space and just kind of get out of there. 
Yeah, it's their house, right? So yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. So uh, moving on, you've got a couple of interesting stories. You had a uh, a movie uh, that you inspired titled Red Woods. Uh, tell oh, yeah. us a bit about that. Yeah, that guy reached out. Um, he reached out to me and said um, he watched my videos and my channel was an inspiration to that movie, and and it was kind of the movie was kind of interesting. Like it was kind of accurate how. Um, you know, urban explorers have all their, like their names, you know, their handles and stuff and yeah. they'll meet together as a group and, you know, go explore some places. And it, this one was more like a horror movie though. So it showed them like exploring all these abandoned houses in the woods and they had their drones and they had their camera gear and they all met up. But then there was like a, a ghost or something in the house and slowly <laughs> killing these guys off. And, but it was interesting. It was, it was his first feature film. And, um, yeah, he just contacted me. I'm like, yeah, that's great. Like, uh, so yeah, like it was. It, I watched the movie. It's not going to win an Oscar, but it was. Uh, it, was <laughs> it was good. Like, I, I liked it. Every house has a story. There's a lot of sadness. It's beautiful. That's what we came for, uh, guys. There's evil in these woods. That's cool. And then what about this novel, Unearthly Abandoned? You were talking about that the day that you and I went out. Yeah, that's right. I, uh, Yeah, she reached out to me, and she's a fan of my channel, and uh, she watches all my videos, and same thing. You know, the channel was kind of an inspiration for the book, um, but it was like a, it's like the same kind of story. It's it's more of like a, it's a horror-type uh, novel. Um, but, yeah, no, I'm thrilled. That's like – I, you know, I'm thrilled when people reach out like that and, uh, you know, the book and the movie, I, I was, I was kind of neat. Speaking Thanks. of people reaching out, you and I have something in common and that we, we, we often will get offered sponsorships and product reviews. Um, do you ever like, do they all come to you or do you often, you know, sit down at a computer and just sort of do your own outreach for sponsorships? No, I, I never reach out. Um, I get quite a bit. And I, I, at the beginning, I was like, yeah, you know what? Like, I don't really want to start doing that. I know some guys that have YouTube channels, they're against that. Some have, you know, they do it all the time, but it is yeah. income. Like, it's not like totally. a lot of it's not just, oh, here's a free, you know, like uh, the portable battery, the you know, portable yeah. battery thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the, the just, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, it's, it's not always just a free product. Sometimes they're paying you too. Um, mm -hmm. And then you get commission as well, right? Like, right. you know, you could, for years on end, you could be getting commission on sales, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lot. I kind of, if I do do sponsorships, I kind of like them to be kind of like to do with my channel a little bit. Like, yeah. you know, like maybe cl an outdoor clothing. Like you do the the Loom Cube and yeah. kind of stuff like that. Something to do with like what you're doing, kind yeah. of, right? So I've, I've turned down quite a few. I know you have too. <laughs> Like some of some stuff's yeah. so weird. Like I got candy companies contacting <laughs> me to like ship me all like bedroom roll full of candy to like eat and yeah. test out and do a review on. Like I'm not really interested in stuff like that. I get yeah. all kinds of all weird stuff. Weird stuff. Yeah. But, I've had yeah, no, um like, I I was once offered um you know like those Peloton bikes, like exercise bikes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was once offered by a company very similar to that, like a big exercise bike with a giant computer screen that connects to your Wi-Fi. And I'm like, how am I going to do a review on a, on a exercise bike that has nothing to do with like, sure. I'm sure I could tie it in and say, I need to stay in shape and be fit. So this new bike, you know, no, I've said no to that. I said, yeah. no, to, like I always get these video games that want me to test their video game and I'm, I'm not a gamer. So yeah. know your audience before you reach out. But yeah, I'm the exact same. Um, the blue eddy power portable charger i could totally use that thing uh the For flashlights sure. are extremely relevant uh the 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 bearskin hoodie uh yeah everything that i as with you everything that we both do it's relevant to our content and For you sure know, i get a i get a i get a lot of heat from people for calling me a sellout but like for me exact same as you i have a full-time job and 
a lot of the revenue I make from YouTube, I actually put it aside for my retirement and sure I save it for my daughter and, yeah. um, or I use it to pay for my trips that I go on. And I don't think anybody has a right to tell us how we can and can't earn. And exactly. the line I always like to say to people is, is if you have enough money in your life that you can say no to more, Hey, good for you. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, yeah. And they don't have to watch it. If they don't like the ad yeah. or they're, they don't they just click away. Right. They don't have to watch yeah. it, but no, it, it's, yeah. it's, it, it helps pay. Like I use it for my trips as well. And, you know, getting upgrading my gear and, uh, it's just, yeah, it's just the way it is. Like, I, I don't, I don't mind doing them, but uh, yeah, yeah, it is good to do something that your viewers are probably buy. Like I've had, I sold totally. a few of those battery things because people, yeah. people will use that. A lot of people watching our channels are probably into the outdoors and camping and hiking and doing things outside. And a lot of them explore themselves, but they don't have a channel yeah. or they don't post pictures. They just explore themselves on their own. Um, right. Yeah. So that's, that's. Stuff like that is good, right? Like I get, yeah, like yeah. I get video games, but a lot of my viewers, to be honest, like, cause I don't do, I know Ethan gets a lot of younger crowd. Like, cause he does a lot of the mansion. Yeah. He's like younger viewers. I get like, yeah, I got some old people watching my channel and, uh, Same. like a lot, <laughs> yeah. So like video games, like, yeah, they might not, uh, buy a video game, but, yeah. uh, yeah, I get, I think I've stuff. said no to more than I've said yes to. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Same to me for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so you said you, your first abandoned place was when you were eight years old. So you've probably in that time been to hundreds, sometimes possibly thousands of abandoned places. Uh, what are some of your favorite locations that you've been to or some of your, your top experiences? Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a couple right now of ones that I've, I've explored before, uh, like when I was a kid and I don't know, when I was a teenager. So yeah, yeah. you wouldn't see these. Um, but it was, uh, I explored this house. Um, it was one of my favorite places. It was a, I don't know if you heard of Dr. Ballard. Uh, it was a famous no. dog food, uh, company. Okay. It's called, I think they're out of business now, but it, they've been around forever. It's just a very popular dog food company. And this guy, he owned a mansion and, uh, it went abandoned. I don't know what happened. Um, but it was a massive, it was a farmhouse mansion type thing, but, I've never seen this before in a house, but it had, it had, it had a dumb waiter in it, which is pretty neat little elevator. Yeah. You put your food in. Um, so we were in high school and we were climbing in that and people are partying in there. Um, but it had leather walls. There was this one room that had all leather walls. I've never seen anything wow. like it before. Beautiful. Yeah. And it actually had in one room, you only see these in like the cartoons, but uh, it had a wall that like spun around. Okay. Yeah. 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 I had one of those. So it was like a bookshelf <laughs> and it just spun around yeah. and it goes into another room. Like it was crazy, but it, wow. it actually was saved. Um, we explored it like almost every year at Halloween. It was just like, we went with my friends. We're like, let's go Halloween. We're going to go explore this house. It sat there for years. Yeah. Um, but they finally, someone bought it and they jacked it all up. <clears throat> they took out all the additions they had on it and then they moved it. I don't know, probably a couple of kilometers away and they totally renovated it. Now it's all, I think it's a law office or a dental office, but wow, it's all that's cool. completely safe. So I do drive by it once in a while and it's yeah. nice to see those ones saved. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then there's another one I went to when I was a kid. Um, I was really young when I went to this one. It was a band of schoolhouse. They had to board it up forever. I don't know. This place was abandoned for like 20 years, I'd say like, People complained and nope, they wouldn't demolish it for some reason. I have no idea, but it opened up somehow. And uh, we went in there as a couple of friends and it was just frozen in time. Like there was crayons and pencils on the desk, uh, stuff on the chalkboard still. Uh, it was unreal. It was like backpacks hanging up. I never, I, I couldn't believe it. And it was just like, they just like, just got up and it just jumped up and left, like took off, right. and left all their stuff behind. And this is a band of schoolhouse. And there was a homeless guy living in there because um, we were going through all the rooms and we noticed like, yeah, there was like cans of beans everywhere, a sleeping bag. And uh, so as soon as we seen that, we we're, we we're young. We just, we got out of there. Right. Um, but that <laughs> yeah. one, those ones are pretty cool. Um, and then the ones I have on my channel, um, I really, I just did that one, the, the Pope John Paul II's Island. That one was pretty neat. Yes. Yeah, yeah I, I enjoyed that. I like. I like. You walked across the. You walked across the lake. The well, no, I lake? took my ATV across. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I knew about it for a little while, 
and I was going to take my boat, but then, you know, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to shoot it there on my, on my ATV on the ice and yeah. uh, check it out. And I was just thrilled at first I, th- I flew, I didn't know what the status of this place because on Google or if it did show that the structures are still there. Yeah, um, I've seen it. Yeah, shore, yeah. I flew my drone like three kilometers. Yeah. Like, close as I could get to it um, to see. And I, and I seen the structures there. So I'm like, okay, I got to go. So that one was pretty <laughs> neat. I love that one. Um, obviously I did the, uh, oh yeah, the, the bandits, the banded um, ghost town in BC. Uh, that one I did. A, it was probably one of my newer videos. That was probably about three years ago. I really yeah. liked that one. That one was featured in the, the Reader's Digest article. They, yeah. they did a story on that. Um, the Bannon Navy ship, I really enjoyed. Something you're not going to see crazy. very often. Yeah. You know, yeah. they only come across. <laughs> yeah, they don't come across that often. I've seen a few online. Like I've seen a few guys do other ones in the States, but uh, I knew yeah. I had to get out there and do that one. And I, and I, I don't know if it's still there, to be honest. I know they were taking mm-hmm. it apart um, when I explored it. Um, but, uh, that one was, that one was a lot of fun. The gold mine was a good one. I like, I was going to say, that's actually a, a segue to my next, my next question. I wanted oh, you yeah. to tell us a little bit about that experience. Cause for me, that's probably your most, the most impressive thing that you've done of all of the videos that you've got. And I wanted to hear you a little bit about that story and that experience of getting there and what that was like. Yeah, it was unreal. Like it was, uh, it took a while to plan that one. I knew, I follow a guy. Um, his name is Life of Luke. He has amazing videos, and he does. He doesn't just do abandoned stuff, but he does all kinds of stuff. Really nice guy. And I seen him. I seen his video on it, and um, I I just I just had to go there. And he did it like quite a few few years ago, I think. And um, I just did some research on it and kind of tried to find a way to get up there. Uh, so it was a long time coming planning it but i got together with three other explorers um one was dame untamed and then jet ohms pizza and bc wander that, that's their instagram and youtube yep. uh names obviously <laughs> but uh, we got <laughs> together and we all we, we went up there um so it was it was a challenge like it was probably f- landing I, I, when i flew in i landed in vancouver and it was about four hour drive from the airport and it was in a heat wave as well. Like oh, you, you don't usually get heat waves out there like we do here in yeah. Ontario. And it was like 40 degrees out there. It was so hot, but it was about a four hour drive. And then once we got off the main road, we got onto some logging roads. It was like dirt roads, um, very bumpy. And I had a plan on where we're going to park and walk in. I knew I was, we we're going to be doing yeah. some bushwhacking. Um, yeah, that was, that was a given, but when we were driving up, um, there was like this construction going on, like there was some construction workers and machinery going on. And, uh, so we got let three, they let us through, but they, they took the road out. They took the whole road out that we're supposed to drive up to. I'm like, I'm like, guys, like I, 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 I can't give up here. Like I, I flew five and a half hours, drove four hours. Like we, we we're doing this. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I got on, cause I knew another guy that went up there and he took some crazy route up there. So I got right on, I had no service up there. So I got yeah. on Instagram and I messaged him and I said, Hey, like, which way did you go in? Because we can't, we can't get in here that they, they took the, they took the road out. So he sent me yeah. like kind of like a little map that he kind of like drew out uh-huh. and uh, I was like, okay, well, we're going to try that one. Um, but yeah, so there's actually, there was actually a, an active mine next door. Okay. And that's what they were doing. They're doing some construction to that one, like next door to the, to the property. It's all on a huge mountain um, mm-hmm. and they have a policy. So if anybody is caught or on their property on the, in this active mine, they shut down the whole thing. Everybody, <laughs> they they have the horns going. They shut down everything until they find the person and get them out. Okay. So we yeah. knew like we couldn't wander onto that section. So yeah. So we kind of avoided that. Um, so yeah. So we drove down some very bumpy roads. Like I think their vehicles, you know, they probably got damage going through. 
Yeah, you're not getting there in a Kia Forte. (laughs) No, not at all. (laughs) Not at all. We had Jeeps and four by fours. Yeah. But we got there. We hit hit a dead end and uh, that was it. So we knew we had to just climb up. And it's you go on Google Earth and you kind of it kind of shows where you are, but uh, there's no there's no there's no trails getting up there, and I was obviously over like way over like I overpacked big time like I had all my <laughs> camera gear, and they're laughing at me like I I I figure I'm oh I'm a this hiking guy I'm a professional hiker but these yeah the three of them are like professionals like they they do this all the time and I had no clue what I was doing really. <laughs> I, had, I had more camera gear than just like water and food and right. um, that was a big mistake like i should have brought more water because of the heat wave um, totally yeah i was just so thirsty and we climbed up this hill and we had to watch because it was a lot of rocks so if you're f- kind of following somebody in their path there's rocks mm. coming down constantly right and right i think i hit I think I stepped on a rock and I think I hit Nikki from Dame Untamed in the wrist. So I felt pretty bad. It hit her in the wrist. But she was okay. But they were crashing down. So we kind of had to like split up a little bit as we were going up because of the rocks falling down. Right. And then once we got up to the top of this hill, we had to shoot across and it was kind of like an open space and we seen the active mine going on. So we didn't want to be seen by them because we're pretty sure we weren't on their property. Um, but we kept going. And then finally, like once we reached the top of this mountain, which took about an hour and 40 minutes of just like uphill. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just unreal. Um, carrying your gear. Oh, God. Yeah, carrying gear. I had like I had two <laughs> yeah. backpacks on. I weighed, I weighed, I don't know. I had probably wow. 80, 80 pounds of gear on my back. I brought everything. Yeah. <laughs> and once we reached the top, it was uh, at this mine where now we're at the top of the mine and there's the stairs. I don't know if you've seen my video or the drone shot of this place. I think there was like, I don't know how many, 600 stairs. I don't know, 600 steps, something like wow. that, 900 steps. But it was like we're at the very top now. So yeah. we just climbed an hour and 40 minutes up a mountain. Now we got to go down all these stairs to reach the mine. Uh-huh. And uh, it was just unreal. Like I got emotional when I got there because I just, there's a long time coming you know i was a big Mm -hmm. i planned it and uh we almost like didn't make it there because of that road that was all took out like yeah so when we got up there i was just like amazed the view is just stunning like Mm -hmm. you can see little town down below it was uh, i think the town's named headley yeah there's a tiny little town down below so we had to walk down all these stairs some of them are pretty good shape but some of them are rotten Mm -hmm. um because it was shut down. Let me just pull it up here. I think it was shut down in 1949. Yeah, 1949, wow. they shut this gold mine down. And uh, so it was abandoned for quite a long time. And mm-hmm. in the 90s, I think the government came in and they wanted to burn down all the buildings, all the wood okay. structures. They wanted to burn them down because of liability of people going up there like we did to explore and explore it. Yeah. I guess they somebody came in and um, they replaced this, the roofs on them. They put uh, steel roofs on them and uh, they fought so they wouldn't get demolished, which was good. So it still stayed, it stayed abandoned until, oh, geez, I guess the 2000, 2011, I think. They started, what they did was they started doing active tours up there. Okay. So they, kind of, they, had, they got a credit, I think, about $300,000. And they fixed up the place a little bit, and they started doing tours up there. Okay. And that shut down, uh, I think, in 2018, and uh, they stopped doing tours. So it's abandoned again. The place has been abandoned forever. Yeah. Um, but there was everything. was like – there was like – when it was kind of neat because they used to do tours, so they had signs everywhere. So what okay. building you were going into – it told you the name of the building and what it was used for. So it was pretty neat, especially when I was filming. Like I knew all the buildings. Like it, it was all on the wall, right? Good. And yeah. Yeah. It was pretty neat. Some are pretty, pretty rough shape. Um, and I never been in a mine, like inside a mine before, like inside, like I never been inside one before too. So they had that going on there and it was all open. Mm-hmm. And uh, wow. so the first day we got up there, it was, we were exhausted. So we kind of just did a bit of filming of the structures the first day yeah um 
And then we went to bed. We had we brought hammocks and we set up hammocks all inside. We picked our own little mm-hmm. spots where we wanted to hang our hang ha- hammocks up. Um, but then the next day, we did uh, some drone footage and we were going to go in the mine. And um, yeah, when I got my drone out, it didn't work for some reason. It's never <laughs> yeah. ever happened to me before. And I was like, yeah. "This is the place you need to have drone footage of this place. You just yeah. need to like it's just amazing." Um, so my drone didn't even work. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? I don't know what happened. It would just wouldn't, it wouldn't work. It's never happened before. So luckily a dame untamed, she had her drone and hers ended up working. So we kind of, she let me borrow hers and I got some drone footage that way. That's good. Yeah. So lucky. Like I had to get drone footage for this place. Definitely. So I was, I was yeah. like, I felt sick to my stomach when this thing wouldn't turn on. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, so we got some drone footage. I was good. And then we went into the mine. We walked, I don't know, a few kilometers underground, and there was like wow. water coming down. All the all the tools were all left behind inside. Um, yeah, it was just wild. Like I just, it was it was a great explore. And um, I know another guy um, that went up there and did a video of it. Uh, what's his channel name now? Brennan. Um, Brennan did it. Um, Uncharted Travels. Uncharted Travels. That's right. Yeah, he yeah. went up there. He uh, yeah he reached out and I. Uh, I kind of told him, like, I don't, I, you know, I share locations with, uh, with you guys and, uh, certain people. Yeah. 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 So I gave him a detailed map on how to get there and he went alone like that. Like and did not, he lose his water supply? Yeah, I did. And I told him <laughs> that, like, I, he asked me for advice and I said, bring lots of water. Like I brought a water yeah. jug, but you go through it so quickly. Cause you're just, you're hiking yeah. up a hill, up a mountain. And yeah. he brought a lot of water and he ended up losing his water. So yeah, he had a tough time up there. And then the rats. <laughs> Oh man, the rats. So I was warned. Someone told me about there's some pack rats. Like I've been to BC yeah. quite a few times and my aunt has a cabin in the mountains and there's pack, pack rats are normal and they love wood structures and abandoned places. Okay. And uh, when we went up there, yeah, as soon as it got dark, you could hear them running around. And I was like, a, I was in my hammock and I was just worried about them climbing up the wood and then going down the string and coming in my hammock. Yeah, yeah. You hear them running around, all around, like everywhere. And I got the flashlight, and they're huge. Like these things, are not like little rats here we get in Toronto. Like these things are like rabbit-sized rats. Oh my god! Like awesome si- size. Oh yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. They're massive, and they're squeaking too. <laughs> they're making noises. I think they're, they're fighting with each other. And it was crazy. I didn't. I didn't get much sleep at yeah. all. Yeah, like maybe an hour <laughs> because the rats. So that was that was pretty crazy. So I told him about the rats. I said, "Hey, you know, there's lots of rats, and bring lots of water." But yeah, it was it was a crazy. It was a special explorer for sure. But I, I would love it to go back. Like it. But they're wow. gonna they're gonna open it back up again. They're gonna start doing tours again. They got a grant. Yeah, and uh, they're slowly um, fixing it up. And I think the mine yeah. is shut down now. I think I seen someone post a picture that they sealed it all up. Uh, they don't want anybody in there, obviously, I guess. Yeah, of but course. The structures are all still there, um, and they're going to open it back up again. So it'd be cool to go up there once the road's done and uh, do the actual tour of the place. But Yeah. Uh, and they have a sign there actually saying, like, you know, they know explorers go up there. It, they've been going up yeah. there forever, since 1949. Yeah. So they have a sign saying, right. just be respectful, close doors, right? Like, okay, don't yeah, right. open. You know, like, because it – some of them are like there was one one building that was drywalled and oh, um, wow. had wood flooring and stuff. But uh, yeah, so they just respect the place. They know you're going to be there walking around. So yeah, we closed all the doors, and uh, yeah, it was just, uh, it was it was great. It was a little special one for sure. That's crazy. So I'm going to say uh, for the people who are listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, I highly recommend you check out first of all the. Uh, the video version of this podcast on YouTube. And I will play some video clips from Brent's videos while he's talking, but I'm also going to link your videos in the description for the uh, podcast. So anybody can go to your channel and check out this, this Explorer. Cause I highly recommend that people watch this one. So awesome. you just talked a little bit about exploring with a group of people. I know you typically explore alone as I do as well. Do you have a preference to uh, going out by yourself or with a group or with another person? Well, I like, I like exploring with like by myself and with a group. So I, I do like yeah. both, but I do like when I'm filming, um, sometimes if I'm with a group, I feel like, you know, I'm taking too long. So I kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, when I'm alone, I could take as long as I want. 
exactly. I, I yeah. Take this, you know, a hundred shots of this one thing. I could do that, and uh, yeah, yeah, and, and when you're filming, like you always want people always talking while you're trying to explain and show your right. viewers the band in place too, right? So yeah, it's nice to split up if you're in a group to kind of go one way, you go the next way, yeah. the other way. You know, maybe the second floor or the basement. You start off different locations. But, uh, but no, I, I love going with a group. Like I have a blast. Like it's, it's neat going with, uh, people that enjoy this hobby as well. Um, but yeah, no, it's, and it's, it's definitely safer to go with a group. Like there's some totally. spots where I've been, where I, you know, I had to go with somebody because, you know, I just didn't want to get stuck or fall or get injured. So Man, you, you segue into every next question because <laughs> my next question is, have, have you ever been hurt or injured or had a close call while exploring? Yeah, well, I, I've obviously hit, stepped on a few nails. So that's a given doing this hobby. Like, um, yeah, the worst one, I stepped on four nails at the same time. It was in a two by four, <laughs> all, whole four nails went in my foot. And at first, like <laughs> all the times I stepped on nails, it doesn't hurt at first. It's just two minutes later <laughs> is when the pain yeah. kicks in and it's just that achy. You feel your heartbeat on, on your foot. Oh yeah. That was, that uh -huh. was, that was, that one hurt. Um, but no, I fell through floors, but not, not really injured. Like I fell through floors and got scraped up. Um, uh -huh. oh, and I fell through a septic tank once the lid was <laughs> gone and luckily I didn't fall like right in. Like I went up, like I hurt my shoulder because yeah. Right away, I knew I was either going down a well or a septic tank. And oh, God. I thought I was going to die. So I just stuck my arm straight out and I uh -huh. slammed my shoulders down and my elbows down. And uh, I was in a septic tank. And oh, my I don't God. Know if it was full or not. Probably not. Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I could have, a lot of these places, they get, they have to get them all pumped out before they abandon yeah. them. But it could have been yeah. full. I don't know. But yeah, I fell on a <laughs> septic tank. So I always like you, you got to watch like that's that's the number one thing I think uh, exploring especially in the summertime when the grass is long like yeah there's a piece of someone could have put a little piece of plywood over top right like you step on that you're done you're if you're by yourself and yeah. you fall in a well or a septic tank you're gonna die unless unless your phone's with you yeah um, but yeah. no nothing really nothing really serious just minor scrapes and bruises sprained ankle you know sprained ankles suck because you gotta limp out of there um, yeah <laughs> but i i went on i was actually when i was younger i think i was probably 12 years old i'll never forget the story i was exploring an abandoned there's a two-story school and they were taking taking it all apart and me and my friend went in this abandoned school just the two of us and we were walking around you know checking everything out and these construction workers caught us and they like, Hey, you know, you can't be in here. And they yelled at us and we just ran for our lives. Like we thought these guys are going to like grab us and kill us. So we ran <laughs> down this hall. So, and it was pitch dark. There was no, there was no lights in there. Um, yeah. so we were running so fast. And I guess there was an elevator shaft, like there was oh, a no. two story school, but there is a basement as well. So I guess it's kind of like three stories, but there was an elevator shaft that they took apart. And all the rebar was sticking up and it was probably up, you know, to your hip of like a uh, concrete block going around with the rebar yeah. sticking up. My friend, he tripped, like he ran into this and he went mm -hmm. head first into this elevator shaft. And I swear yeah. to God, the, the rebar went through his jeans and he was hanging upside down screaming. Oh my God. I couldn't believe it. Like if, if it wasn't for his jeans, he yeah. would have probably died. Like he would have wow. hit his head head first down this elevator shaft. And we totally got caught because he was stuck <laughs> and he was crying and yeah, uh, we yeah. pulled him off and uh, they gave us shit. And, um, but they let us go. But he still, to this day, I don't, I haven't talked to him in years, but for years after um, he kept those jeans and huh. he said he couldn't believe like those jeans saved him. He went right, saved through, his the, right through his jeans. Yeah. So that was yeah. a close call for sure. Like he, he would have died probably or got paralyzed yeah. anyway. But no, I haven't been badly injured That's at all. Good. Have you been a bad have you been injured at all? Explore? Not really. I fell through a floor once and I scratched my hip pretty bad. Uh, I got a couple scars from, uh, you know, like uh, barbed wire from climbing over a fence. 
right. I did fall through a set of stairs once into a basement. Uh, just scraped up my shin pretty bad, but nothing. Same as you, knock on wood. Nothing serious. I yeah. try to be as careful as I can, but uh, you know we're not invincible. So well, it's tough. Um, yeah, when you're filming, right? Like when you're filming, yeah. you're kind of looking at your camera, which is yeah. more dangerous. So it's, yeah. it, you gotta gotta look at both, like where you're walking and your camera and what you're looking at, um, because yeah, like you could totally just walk into something. Yeah, tip, what I usually do. So I usually do pictures first yeah. and I'll walk through the whole facility doing pictures. Uh, and if it's like a multiple story, I'll, I'll film or I'll take pictures to the top and then I'll film down. So I already know where I've been. Okay. That I don't always do that though. Sometimes, sometimes I'll get there and I'll just start filming right away and I haven't even looked at anything. But to me, the smart thing is to walk through first, but I don't always want to do that. If I, if it's a new place to me, I don't want to walk through and then pretend to be excited <laughs> about the doll that I found yeah. or pretend to be excited about the record player. I want exactly. to actually have like a legitimate response and reaction in my video other than being, Oh wow. Look at that. A record player. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I already, already see it, see it already. <laughs> no, I, yeah, true. So true. I, I do the opposite. I, I, when I go to a place, I film right away. I yeah. just start filming the whole thing. And uh, once I'm done, I'll go around taking pictures. And then yeah, at the yeah. very end, I do my drone footage. Uh -huh. um, so there's been cases where, you know, like if it's pouring rain, I can't do any exterior footage. I'll have to come back. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, no. I, I, I usually just film right away. So, yeah, sometimes I step on nails and everything else. Isn't, but, it, isn't it annoying how long it takes? Because you got to do your video. You got to oh, do your yeah. pictures, you got to do your drone footage. You got to take uh, mobile video for TikTok and for Instagram. You got to take cell phone pictures. I used to go in and out like when it was just me and my camera so fast. But yeah. now that I'm doing videos and then I got to do reels, I mean, I don't have to, but I just choose to for the content. Yeah. I spend so much time. I, I used to maybe knock off eight locations in a day. Now I'll be lucky oh, if wow. I get three. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I, I, yeah, it takes me, it depends on the location. Right. Like if, if it's a small place, you know, but if it's full of stuff, like you're yeah. like, you're filming, it's a, it's a long time. And yeah. it, Kiwi, yeah, big... Motley Kiwi and I were in Ohio recently and we went to a place and I had the whole trip planned out. You know, I said, okay, it's an hour drive from this place to this place. We're going to spend an hour and a half and then we're going to leave because then we have to go drive another half hour to this place. I actually had it completely mapped out. But every place we went to was so good that we both looked at each other and we're like, we're not leaving here in an hour. We're staying here for the next three hours because yeah. <laughs> there's yeah, so probably. much stuff. And the thing I noticed about when, when you and I, when we went out, we were both on the same page because we both do YouTube videos. So we both know we're going to be here for a while. We both know you go this way, I'll go that way. Yeah. And it's always good with a fellow explorer who films and also does pictures that you just know we're going to be here for a while and let's stay out of each other's way. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. I just went to the yeah. States and, uh, I met up with Steve Ronan, um, a couple other guys, Chris and Trevor. I met out there, uh, Steve Ronan. Yeah. He, he takes his time filming. He like, like he does, he's, he expects to do like a one location a day. Like, Oh God. Sometimes. Yeah. Like we went around and, <laughs> He just takes his time. He, he's a, he's a professional, really. Uh, the way he films yeah. and does everything, um, it's just like by the by the book. Like he just goes in. There's a certain way you could tell that he does everything, and uh, yeah, he, he takes a long time. So like we did three locations out there one day, and he came he came later. He couldn't come um, the day I flew in, but uh, we did three locations one day, and he was just shocked because. Uh, it takes a while. So it does depend. So like I, that's how I film. Like I try to film in one shot if I can. Um, yeah. Like when I go into a place, I want the viewers to think that, you know, they're walking through this place. So I, I'll right, go in, right. usually start the front door or the front entrance and just go in every room. And one yeah, shot yeah. would be great. It's way easier for editing. If you keep on shutting oh, the camera so much easier, yeah. Time, oh, yeah, yeah. It's like it's taking forever. But then I do like a montage and I like to get slow, slow mo shots and stuff like same, that. Same, yeah. Film footage and stuff like that. So that, that, yeah. that takes time. Yeah. So but, what about, uh, you ever had any serious run-ins with police or like a, like a bad uh, experience with security or property owners? Like any like memorable experiences? 
Uh, well, yeah, like I usually you just got to be polite. Like if you're yeah. uh, if you don't get permission <laughs> um, and someone shows up, you just be polite. Like if they see, yeah. especially when they see camera gear, like if you're yeah. if you're just there with nothing, uh, you know what? They, they might give you a ticket um, because they don't know what you're doing. But when you got a camera camera gear on you and you say, hey, I'm just here taking pictures. I'm kind of into this sort of stuff. They, yeah. they usually just either ask you to leave or they just say, well, finish up and uh just leave and you know because it's more it's more about liability that's what it is like i've been caught by a homeowner there's an old abandoned farmhouse and the place is rotten away technically yeah yeah, like if i go in there and i'm taking pictures and i fall through the to the basement and break my back i could totally sue the homeowner right so that it's Uh it's all liability that's why they board them up they don't want people in there right yeah um because yeah funny about that is like i would never if i got hurt in an abandoned building, I would never think to sue the owner. It's my own fault. <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But you know what? Like someone wandering in there, you know, who knows that there's no signage too, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's more liability, I think, but no, not, you know, this I've had, I've seen security and they usually, they don't get paid that much either. So they just, no, no, they don't care. They slip them a $50 <laughs> bill and, yeah they're like go help yourself go right ahead so i've done that before i've done that before (laughs) and it worked you know what like you take all the time you want as long as you don't say his name and say oh the security guard let me in here yeah yeah uh, yeah we did that in the states actually he wouldn't take any money it was was like 50 bucks and it turned into 100 bucks and he's like no i'm not oh, losing my job he's like yeah, yeah. He, he wasn't going for it and it was that there was cameras there too so he he didn't uh it was on his shift so he said absolutely not but no i went to um i went to you did this house i think with the the dead body stain on it yep yeah i seen i seen a few people go to that one i seen your video yeah and i decided to go check it out and uh i was only there for like two minutes and I could hear the walkie talkies coming down the driveway. Like I, wow. I look over and I see like four cop cars pull up. I'm like, what is going on here? I thought maybe somebody, they were chasing somebody and they were kind of running down there. I, yeah. I'm like, so they came over and they're like, what are you doing here? And right away I said, oh, I was just, I'm taking pictures of the barn, the old barn in the back. I'm just taking some pictures here. <laughs> well, like, what's that in your hand? I'm like, it was my gimbal, my big stabilizer thing. They're like, what yeah. is that? I'm like, oh, it's like a tripod. I was trying to explain to him what it was. And uh, I just said, oh, it's like a tripod kind of thing. And mm-hmm. uh, he's like, oh, wow. I was like, well, this is, we, we seen ev- your every move. There's a live, there's a live Wi Fi camera like on the tree here. And I'm wondering <laughs> why. Like, I, I could, I, it was really strange because this house was, when I went, it was a long time after you, you went and it was like vandalized and it was badly decayed. So I didn't understand who would set up a camera there because they were there in like two minutes and they knew exactly my every move where I was walking. And, um, yeah, then, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why it was just strange to me why they were watching that house so closely, but they just asked Mm -hmm. me to leave. They didn't even get my name. They just said, Oh, you know, you can't, you can't can't be here. Just, uh, uh, you gotta go. So I'm like, yeah, sorry about that. I won't come. I won't come back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I noticed that house is actually, is now the town took it over. Oh, so really? Person, yeah. So the person that okay. passed away, I guess, has no family. Yep. And um, that's those are like the true abandoned ones because, like, they have no family. And the house, so once I think it goes two years, usually it's two years when you don't pay property tax, mm-hmm. the, the town will come back and they're, they'll take your house. And then okay. they will auction off the house and property for the yep. back taxes. So, so right. I think I think it was fifteen thousand dollars in back taxes or something. It's not always two years. Like I've seen in the city of Toronto, they finally took over these houses that were abandoned for like twenty years. So mm-hmm, nice mm-hmm. subdivision, and these houses sat there abandoned for twenty years, and the back taxes was just like a few hundred grand. Yeah. And yeah. finally, they just auctioned them all off, and they get more than what the house is. Of course, house, like what's owed on it, obviously. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that house. Yeah. So it's going to be uh, auctioned off, I think, in the next little while. So they obviously had no family there. But yeah, that, yeah. That, 
I haven't really had too much running with with people. It's, it's always Good. better to ask permission, obviously. Then you can take of course. It, yeah. as, long as, as, long, as long as you want in there, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, heard, um, I watched the episode with Carlo, Carlos there, your first episode. And, uh, yeah, you asked him, uh, why is it? It seems like you get caught a lot. <laughs> I think he does. But it's, I don't know. It's just luck. Yeah, I think it's just bad luck. Like yeah. I, I've been to places where – you know, the next day someone else goes and they get caught. So it's like, it yeah. is luck, you know. Totally. Uh, so I'm, I ask everybody this question and I'm going to be keeping track of uh, of the results. What's in your camera bag and what uh, what gear do you use? Yeah, so I use um, a Panasonic Lumix G85. It's a 4K camera. Um, so I have a, I have that on like a stabilizer, like a gimbal. Yeah. Um, well, you've right. seen it. I've seen it. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I got, uh, I got, a, I got the loom, loom cube right here. Yeah, yeah. I got it on the front here. I got um, an external mic. I just started using the wireless mics. So I put, you put a little microphone. Yeah, yeah um, I have those too. Yeah. Yeah, I just started using that. This is really good for doing exterior shots. If it's windy, you don't, you don't hear yeah. the wind at all in this. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is my setup here. It is quite heavy. Like I gotta switch arms constantly when I'm filming. I'm just like constantly switching arms. Yeah. Because it's just yeah. like, it does weigh a lot, which is a this is a downfall to that. <laughs> but uh, I, I take I just pop this off and I take pictures with it as well. That's great. Yeah, and I have uh, I have a drone. I just bought a new drone. I I used the Mavic Mini Pro or Mavic Mini Three Pro, which is oh wow, good amazing drone. It's unreal. It does. That's vertical. got the obstacle of voice, right? Yeah. And it's got a yeah. vertical shot for reels. If you want to do reels, oh, that's cool. You press a button yeah. and the camera just flips up vertical, and you do do reels. Um, wow. It's amazing drone, way quieter than the Mavic <laughs> Mini. Um, it's just it's, it's a really good drone. So I have that, and I have my old Mavic Mini as well. Yeah. Um, gloves, of course. You want to have gloves on, just in case you want to touch some stuff with some poop on it or something. But. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I always picking stuff up. I, I I wear gloves in the winter time. Not much in the summertime. I don't wear gloves. But I have, uh, yeah, that's about it, I guess. That's pretty good. So you you pack pretty light. That's good. Yeah, just just one bag. But yeah, uh, no. And the uh, the last question I have is uh, if there was a young explorer like you when you were a kid, or looking to get into the hobby, or start their own YouTube channel, what advice would you give to somebody who's looking to get into this hobby? Oh geez, probably uh, stay out of the drama, the urbex drama. There's a bit, bit of drama going on there, so probably stay out of that. Um, be your, do your own style. Be your own, be your own person. Do your own thing. Try not to copy somebody else. Like it's good to uh, get ideas from other guys and stuff like that. Um, but just be yourself. Do your own style. Um, do it because you like exploring, you know, explore abandoned places because you like it. You know, if you're going to start a YouTube channel just to try to make money off it, it's, it's not really that good because it will show in your work. It will show in your yes. work. You know, you got to truly like what you're doing if you want to do a YouTube channel of any kind. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's about it. Don't fall in a, a well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's it, guys. So this is Brent from Abandoned Urbex Canada set him up really good interview lots of interesting information all of his links are going to be down below highly recommend you watch his videos especially the abandoned gold mine thanks a lot for being here brent thanks for joining us episode five i don't know who's coming up next so uh brent thanks for being here and i hope to see you soon thanks for having me appreciate it dave see you soon Okay, guys, that was Brent. Hope you guys liked that. That's my longest interview so far, coming in at about one hour that we had to talk to Brent, and he had a lot of great stories. So hope you guys really liked his stuff. Again, hit the links down below, follow Brent, check out his videos, especially the one of the abandoned ghost town. Okay, guys, now it's Urbex Book Club time and Urbex Story Time. This is the part in every podcast where I go back and I find a topic that we talked about in this recent episode, and I see what Jeff Chapman had to say in the book, Access All Areas, back in 2005 about that very subject. So we did touch on the subject of 
squatters and homeless people and uh, trying to avoid dealing with squatters and that this is basically their home. And I wanted to go back to see what Jeff Chapman had to say in Access All Areas. And sure enough, I found a, a couple lines in a paragraph on page 214 of Access All Areas. So let's get in and see what Ninjalicious had to say back in 2005 about the subject of squatters. There are a few things that you really should just keep to yourself. You will occasionally come across homeless people squatting on sites. Not only should you not take pictures of their dwellings, you really shouldn't mention it to a wide audience, as it could easily lead to their eviction. And that is a devastating thing to happen to someone, whether they legally own their dwelling or not. Squatters and explorers are generally on the same side. And it's in the best interest of explorers for things to stay that way. So go out of your way to make sure you don't do them any harm. That's it, guys. Short and sweet. Be careful with the squatters. They can definitely be dangerous. They can have their guard up. They can have weapons. But if you can approach them peacefully, maybe just let them go their way. You go your way or respect that this is now their home and leave. And that's all I have to say about that. And that's a wrap on episode five, guys. If you're still here, if you're still listening, thanks so much, guys, for listening or thanks for watching. If you're watching this one on YouTube or on Zencaster, where I have a video version of the podcast. Speaking of the podcast, please, if you're able to leave me a review, I know Apple Podcasts has an option to leave a review. Please leave me a great review to help get this podcast seen by more people so guys see you next week where we'll have exploring with angelo he's got some great stories about his ghost hunting and his travels all over the united states and canada for his explorers after that we have trespass everywhere after her we've got a criminal lawyer here to give us some advice and i'm also hoping to get some time with my old friend germ nine and I'm still trying to land an interview with a doctor who can help talk to us about the long and short-term effects of mold, black mold, and the different disgusting things that we're breathing in and what the effects are of that. So that's it, guys. Thanks so much for checking out episode five of All Access, the Photography Podcast. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.